In every generation and generation, the obligation to hate Amalek is not what you think to hate the Amalek of 3,335 years ago. No, no, no. It's to hate the Amalek today. Who is the Amalek today? Bernie Sanders, Chuck Schumer, Bennett, Lieberman, and the rest of the garbage out there. They are the Amalek today. Amalek is a concept. It's not just the genealogy, it's the concept. It's the concept that you have so many wicked people in the world, Jews and non-Jews, come from any nation. People that always gonna do everything they can to make you step back from the religion. It could be scientists, it could be professors in college, it could be many different teachers, reporters in a newspaper, reporters on the news, all kinds of uh, director in Hollywood that make all kinds of heresy, heresy films, and even speakers that consider themselves as rabbi and they teach and they post their lectures online and they destroyed you with their heresy. And they make so many people who wants to be religious become idol worshippers. Or make many people who wants to come closer to Hashem they make them con- con- totally confused in the principles of the religion, in the right ideology. They get so confused that in the end they lose everything. And that's called Amalek. So the concept of hating Amalek today is exactly like it was a thousand years ago and three thousand years ago. The Amalek is still everywhere you go. You don't have a day in your life without meeting them. You meet them on the news. You meet them even when they say the weather. You meet them on the Discovery Channel when they describe to you how the world is billions of years old. You meet them in politics. You meet them as leaders of, of, of countries. You meet them as terrorists. You meet them everywhere you go. The entire world is full of them. That's the concept of hating Amalek. Because Amalek is the enemy of God. And because he's the enemy of God, he always will attack God's children. That's why they don't attack other nations. They always come to attack only the children of God. And that's what they do. And who are the Amalek? A Kofrim, the heretics, the infidels that fight against Hashem. They are continuing the legacy of Amalek and the hatred to them must be in the highest possible level. How do we learn it? It's written in Exodus 17, verse 16. Milchama, a war, Le'ashem, to God, Ba'amalek, Midor, Dor. There's a war between God and Amalek in every generation. What do you mean in every generation? They are gone already from the time of Sancheriv, more than 2,000 years. From here you see that they are not gone and they are all over. And the war with them will never end until the arrival of the Messiah. Milchama le'ashem ba'amalek midor dor. It means if the Torah told you that this war will remain in every generation and generation, it means that they will be around. And who are they? The heretics, the kufrim, alochamim be'milchemet be'milchemet ba'ashem u'v'torato. Milchama ba'ashem u'v'torato. Let's go a little bit deeper to explain more. The war against Amalek is different than any other war you heard about or you know about. It's a completely different concept. As it's written in the end of Parashat Ki just what we read on Shabbat, Zachor et asher asea lecha Amalek baderech. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way. Who cares where? Who cares on the way, in the city, in the land, on the moon? Who cares where? Amalek comes to kill us. What difference does it make if we are here or here or there? No, there is a concept to the world 
בדרך, אשר קרחה בדרך. What happened to you on your way? All the commentaries, they all explain that the concept of Amalek is to attack someone that is on his journey, on his path, on his way. They are different than all other wars. All other wars have a reason why they fight. They want land, they want money, they want oil. They just ate the other nation, so they start a war with them. It could be revenge. You did this to us, so we will do this to you. Top. But it definitely has some kind of a physical reason. They have no physical reason. We don't have anything together with you. We never took from you. We don't live next to you. If you never come to attack us, you will never see us. It's 100% a spiritual war. So, Rabotai, when the Jewish nation is walking in the middle of the desert and they don't have a land of their own, what would Amalek gain by attacking them? Will they get a land? No. Will they get oil? No. What will they get? Besides killing people, women and children, what will they get? The answer, they will make you weak in your religion. That's all. Amalek, Kofrim ba'emuna, they are heretic, infidel against faith in God. They are kofrim in ashgachat Hashem al buav. They don't accept the concept that Hashem runs the show, that Hashem is in charge in every detail. They fight to cut off the name of God from this world. They want to spread communism and heresy and all kinds of things that unfortunately they did everywhere you go. Therefore, when Hashem proved to the whole world in the exodus of Egypt how he runs the show and nothing can happen without him and it became so obvious to everyone Shamu Amim Irgazun Chil Achaz Yoshve Pelashet It's written in the Torah All the nation hurts and they were shaking from fear they were restless, and the people of Pleshet, the Philistines, that sits in the area of Gaza, back in time, they were shaking from fear. Chil, Chil means fear, Achaz Yosheh Pleshet. The people of Pleshet know the Jews are on the way to this land. This is the end of us. Right the way Amalek came... From very, very far, they troubled themselves to come and to attack only to cool, to cool the people from their devotion and hot faith in Hashem. To cool you. So the concept of hating them and fighting them and destroying them is not, the concept is not to take an Amalek Nazi and kill him. The concept is what's behind it, to kill the ideology of this Rishayim. What does it mean, Asher Karcha Baderech? Karcha Milashon Kar. Kar means cold, he's cooling you. Look how hot you are. What is it like? A person went on a date with a, a great girl. Ten times they went on a date, perfect, wow. It's, it's full of fire and, uh, and feelings, butterflies in his heart. Then come a jealous friend of him and begin to cool him off. Ah, you didn't see? She's too heavy, she's too short, she has this, her family is a disaster. I checked once, she was here, she was there. Five years ago she had uh, something in school. Slowly, slowly, he speaks bad about this girl until this guy, after a week, everyone asks him, what happened? You were so enthusiastic. What happened? You're not so interested for the next date. That's Amalek. That's what Amalek does. You have a miracle, immediately come some lefty scientist and say, oh, that happens. You know, sometimes it's because of the galaxies, they this and that. <laughs> that creates a, a storm in the ocean. It's hard to believe, but it does affect a lot of people. It does affect a lot of people. 
So Rabotai, listen to this. Asher karcha lashon mikre also, not just kor, kor means cold, coldness. Karcha means mikre, you know these people that everything that happened, how do you know it's from God? Coincidence, things happen. It happens once in a blue moon, it happens, and now it did. Right away, they put a doubt. Amalek means safek. Amalek means safek. It's the same numeric value. Amalek is 240, safek. A doubt is also 240. By the way, there is another thing that is 240. You know what? Dollar. Money. Money is also Amalek. Once you have a lot of money, you don't need God so much. That's how people think. 